Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. This video chronicles the June 20th live stream. Uh, so it's a four hour live stream, but I've condensed it to its essentials. And here we are launching the first module of Mir to the moon. So we're using an Energia, well, it's a Vulcan rocket with four boosters, or you can call it Energia either way. Um, but we've got the payload on top of it and on the side of it. And here is booster separation. So we're, oh, We've got a payload fairing that accidentally got staged with the boosters. Oop. Uh, it looks like we're okay, kind of thing. Anyway, uh, well, this is awkward. So, yes, we are launching the core of Mir to the moon. And I previously made a video about building Mir around the moon, and it was taken from the live streams for Solar System Tourism. But here I'll present it in the context with the rest of the activities that we have. And so we separated off that stage, and that fairing knocked out one of the solar panels. So that's a problem. Yes, we lost a solar panel, and we'll have to contrive to fix that. And here we are, uh, selling the fuel down for translunar injection. Unfortunately, the RCS thrusters on that stage, the Vesuvius stage, aren't working. And... I forget, I think it's because we have the wrong propellant. I configured the RCS thrusters to UDMH and NTO, but packed hydrazine in that stage. So I was using the Briz stage to sell the fuel down and ignite. The engine on that stage still doesn't have a plume at this point. I eventually fixed that, but I didn't yet. So you can see it's doing a correction maneuver here because it took too long to light the engine. And then we have to do another correction here using the Briz stage. That's what that is. The Briz stage has... Uh, core tank and then an optional toroidal tank as an expansion and in this case we have the expansion there and I also put five Briz engines instead of just one plus four verniers so I put an extra four engines in place of the verniers which saves us a lot of burn time because otherwise it's in a one hour burn time anyway here we are trying to put the mirror core into orbit around the moon using the Briz stage a uh, very handy stage in Realism Overhaul with Kerbal Space Program because it doesn't have a tendency to explode or disintegrate as it seems to in real life. Uh, it's had some problems in real life. It's, it's, it's still an okay stage in real life. It just occasionally has problems is all I'm saying. Anyway, we only have the one solar panel, so we'll have to send something to fix that, which is what I'll plan on doing next. But at least we got to orbit around the moon, a tight orbit as well. We're in one of those frozen orbits. 86 degrees is supposed to be safer as far as the moon's mass concentrations, so that doesn't uh, affect the orbit quite as much. So that's why we picked this inclination for Mir. And we have 140 meters per second left, so it's pretty tight there. But we managed it, and I cooked up a sort of repair mission. And obviously we were going to use a Soyuz, but I have to come up with a lunar-ish Soyuz. Not the lunar Soyuz for N1, but something a little bit more sophisticated. So I decided to use a Briz again, and uh, put solar panels on it. And also a KIS container, so that we can pack the solar panel and tools, so that they can... Uh, fix up the station and Yeah, we'll see how this works. The problem I guess is I decided not to use the energy uh, Sort of thing that we just used to launch the station to the moon instead. I Wanted to try something experimental. This is a Vulcan Centaur X with four RD 0146s, so if you'd like I mean it's a Vulcan stage, so it's almost Soviet. No, I mean <laughs> Uh, so, we put that on top of the first two stages of Proton and launched it from Baikonur. And I tried to figure out whether this was a good idea or not. We've got Madford and Raider Nick. Raider Nick uh, was watching, he's actually the one who created this Proton, these two stages of Proton. So it was somewhat fitting to send him on this mission. I don't recall him actually paying for it as a tourist. I just conscripted him. <laughs> um, and here we go. Uh, hot staging I did not do properly there, obviously. But we've got an awkward upper stage here. The rocket actually looks pretty good with this upper stage on it, but the question is whether it'll actually work or not. 
I created those fairings as my Vulcan upper stage, so... Yeah, that I knew would separate just fine. I separated off the fairings at 80 kilometers because I was concerned about our Delta V for good reason. It's going to be tight. And here is the end of the second stage here. So we omitted the third stage of Proton because there was no point having it when we have this stage here. And this is more efficient and will hopefully get us to the moon as well. But it's got a lot of work to do trying to get us just to orbit and it's a long burn time. And I decided to plot some interplanetary transfers while we were waiting. So got those alarms into Kerbal Alarm Clock. And finally, here we are making orbit. Okay, as you can see, we do not have enough in this stage left for the transfer. The transfer usually takes about 3,100 meters per second. We got 2,600, so but I locked the fuels in the briz, so we can unlock that. And all together, we have probably just enough to do a rendezvous. Yeah, maybe. I was a little bit nervous about that because not only do we have to go to the moon and capture, we have to capture into a inclined orbit, 86 degrees, and then make sure we're phased with the mirror core in order to get there. So I take a look at our supplies and launching from Baikonur is awkward because either you time it correctly at the certain time of the month or you have to do an off-plane transfer. And I did an off-plane transfer instead of timing it properly. And so we're taking extra long to get there, which is why I was concerned about the food, water, and ox the supplies. And here I'm trying to plot the rendezvous to see how much that'll cost and compare it to our available Delta V. You can see there's sort of a phase difference once we get into orbit. And ultimately I decide that we it's too tight and I decide not to chance it. However, I wanted to test the pod to make sure that re-entry with the Soyuz capsule works because I didn't know whether this was properly lunar configured. Uh, this I don't remember which mod this comes from. This is not a Raider Nick Soyuz. But I just wanted, if it was Raider Nick Soyuz, I'd know because Raider Nick was there. I could just ask him whether he configured it for the moon or not. But I did know, not know about this one, so I decided to send it to high orbit and then bring it back. However, having made those interplanetary alarms, one of those alarms were really soon, and the Kerbal Alarm Clock is stopping us from our time warp and telling me that it's actually already the Earth to Mars transfer point. So I need to pay attention to that, so I create an alarm for when this arrives at Apoapsis because we need to get its periapsis down into the atmosphere. And I move on to making a Mars station uh, because we want locations for our tourists to visit and a Mars station seems like the kind of place we need. I go with a nuclear engine. I had not developed my Timberwind nuclear engines yet at this point. Um, I do that eventually. But right now we have to resort to the ones that come with realism overall, which are misshapen versions of the stock Nerva <laughs> and uh, so that's what I put on there. It's a Nerva 2 and I use the uh, hydrogen tank from the Casse rocket. The Casse rocket has a nuclear version but unfortunately there's a shader problem with that. The station parts are from USI. They are the Pioneer module and the Kerbitat and they're, uh, I configured them myself for realism overhaul. Uh, here we have uh, Raptor boosters and then my shuttle mice on the SLS, but the Raptor boosters didn't seem quite enough, so I created custom Raptor boosters, because those were flyback Raptor boosters. I decided to just go with non-recoverable Raptor boosters here, at each with seven Raptors. Uh, I had not at this point developed my Raptor 9 rocket and used those as boosters, uh, if you saw uh, ultimate collaboration SLS video that I posted. There I had the full-fledged Raptor 9 recoverable boosters instead of these makeshift ones using procedural tanks. But the uh, this was sort of a t concept test and this is where I sort of started to get that idea, if you will. Of course I had the shuttle mice already. Uh, so we are developing that notion. A lot of ideas come from 
certain frustrations that occur during the series, I go like, well, maybe we could do this instead. And so I did. I modeled uh, things like the Raptor Booster and Blender. Of course, fixed the shader on the nuclear stage. I didn't like the Nerva 2 here that came with Realism Overhaul, and the model sucked. So that's why I eventually made the Timberwind engines, so that I had my own nuclear engines that looked a lot better. <laughs> so, and here we are making orbit. This is just shy of orbit. We're going to spend the external tank. The shell mice will be still on a suborbital trajectory. They can use their own fuel to modify that as necessary. But uh, some sort of clipping issue caused us to lose the hydrogen tank for the nuclear stage. There's the floating Nerva 2 there. Uh, I think it had to do with that inner stage. There's something weird with it. It does tend to want to explode during normal SLS operations, so... Well, we lost our transfer stage, which is what that was. And so I just decided to get this to orbit and figure out what to do with it later on uh, in the next stream, because we do have a docking port up front. We can dock a new transfer stage to it. I get all the stuff out and prepare make sure that it's ready to go if I decide to use it and that I will decide in the next stream which will be in the next video so we've got a lot of stuff to handle we've got a wayward uh, Raider Nick in a Soyuz pod we've got a mirror core that is somewhat busted at least missing a solar panel we haven't fully built mirror yet that's just the first module we've got this Mars station that's stranded in low earth orbit and all that will be dealt with next time. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.